Welcome back to the Sports Fix. Great chatting there with Alex Forster, the former AFL player who hails from Narracourt. And we're very much staying in the country as we go over to Paul Pierce to talk all things Air Peninsula cricket. Paul, how are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, Ellis. Plenty happening across the various leagues that you are across. We'll start in the far west where over on the weekend, the Streaky Bay Bears defeated Sejuna at the Streaky Bay Sports Club. How did that one play out for you? Yeah, now that was the second semi-final, so the first of the final series. Um, they played Sejuna, who finished second. Sejuna made 155 runs. Um, Charlie Williams with 45, and Jamie Bennett made 25. Uh, fairly good score. Um, young Liam Buckley with three for 26, and uh, Froggy Dolling took three for 35 for Streaky. So competitive score. Streaky, however, uh, lost a few early wickets and uh, had a controversial LBW um, not allowed. Uh, appealed, but um, Froggy Dolling um, batted really well for Streaky, got them over the line, and Tobin Lennell as well, so 67 for Frog, and Tobin took three, uh, got 33 runs as well. Uh, Streaky Bay got the runs six wickets down, so they've gone straight into the green final. And just an interesting side note, I see Brendan Cloden there, who's uh, probably the best wicketkeeper of all time, took two for 16 for Sojourner, so yeah, well done to BK, probably your career best figures for him. Yeah, absolutely. We echo those sentiments. And just looking at how things are shaping up with the preliminary finals, give us the lowdown there. I know Sajuna, they'll be in action at home. So tell us how that's all looking. Yeah, now they'll be playing uh, the winner of which was the uh, first semi final between Thevenard and Smoky Bay. And Smoky Bay were looking a good chance. I think they upset uh, Thevenard a few weeks ago. However, Thevenard came out and they made 231 runs, which is a Pretty good score any time of the year. Uh, Jared Trowbridge, 101. Magnificent runs there and backed up with by Lockie Wilkins who took uh, bowlers to town and made 62 as well. Uh, Joey Williams was the best of Smoky Bay bowlers uh, with three for 39. And after the, one of the team batting first has made 230, uh, Fellas are fairly demoralised, and Smokey must have been, because they were all out for 66 um, runs, so they fell well short. And as this Jared Trowbridge coming off his 100, he was obviously not too demoralised. He took five for nine, um, bowling second after making a ton. So, yeah, great game for Jazza. And uh, Josh Redgold, I'll paint up, he took two for nine as well. So, Thevenard, they'll be coming up against Sejuna in the prelim final this week, so that'll be an absolute crackerjack game. Most certainly, we'll be keeping our eyes fixed on that one. Uh, Heading across to the Eastern Air Cricket Association, we had a couple of games taking place across the weekend, one of those being at Cleve Oval, this one between Cleve, who defeated Cal. So talk to us about what went on there. Yeah, now Cal uh, batted first there. This this is uh, one versus two, the second semi-final as well. And Cal made 137. And a man we mention every single week, Carl Jeske from Cal, made 47, um, backed up by another. Well, and it's not so young fella. Uh, Jeff Starr with 35. Um, and Cleve had a couple of good bowlers there. Young Ken Tahini, who's uh, back home for the finals, I think, uh, amidst uh, all of his football training, um, sending bounces here, there, and everywhere amongst the ears of the cow guy. Took three for 15, and he was backed up by Elliot Claxton. He took three for 22. And uh, uh, Cleve came out, and uh, well, they pretty much did it on the trot. They lost four wickets, but uh, those four wickets uh, were pretty much all guys going for a big swing and getting caught on the boundary, I hear. Uh, Regan Tahini's only young fella. He took uh, 29 runs, and uh, Dylan Jenner, who's not so young, he made 27 for Cleve. And, yeah, they did it all wickets down. And um, a few of the guys have told me during the week that the Cleve Oval is looking absolutely magnificent at the moment. So, yeah, p- probably the best oval over this way by a street. So they'll be coming, the losers of that, the cow, they'll be coming up against Port Neal this week in the prelim final. Port Neal um, in the first semi-final came up against Buckle Blue. And another big score here, Port Neal made 212. And another name we keep mentioning just about every week, and Cooper Llewellyn made 74 uh, for Port Neal. And Sid Masters made 35. And then uh, one of the younger fellas getting around, old uh, Shannon Lowood, Bozo from Buckleboo. He took four for 29. So good effort from old Bozo. He had a uh, ripper effort there to try and restrict the score. But yeah, 212 is pretty hard to defend. Uh, Buckleboo, uh, their opponents, they uh, only made 99 in response in the uh, young Jack Lambert made uh, 40. To finish off what's been an absolutely brilliant season for him, um, he took 33 wickets or something like that for the season. So he's been absolutely fantastic. And the best of the Port Neal bowlers was another young bloke, Noah Ramsey, and he took four for 32. So, yeah, this week, pretty and final, looking really good. Uh, it's going to be a cracking game, Cow versus Port Neal. But I think Port Neal, um, they're on a 
pretty damn good roll at the moment. So look out for them, especially on that oval at Cleve. It's a magnificent surface with great value for your shots. There we go. And I dare say the Cleve Oval Horticulturalist deserves a bit of a pay rise, Paul. Oh, absolutely. Look, the Cleve Oval has been pretty much fully redeveloped in the last years. They've got brand new club rooms there, um, and the whole community's got right behind the total redevelopment of everything, and it's an absolute credit to those guys there. So if anyone gets a chance to have a game with Cleve Oval, do it because it's a fantastic spot there now. Here, here. Let's head across to La Hunt in the A grade. Uh, we had the Western Districts who were defeated by Wadiki Warambu. So unpack that one for us, Paul. Yeah, now, it's, you know, Wadiki Warambu, it's easy if you just say Wadi Boo. Ellis. <laughs> I'll bear that in mind. <laughs> Quite the mouthful. Yeah, absolutely. Wadi Boo is very easy to say. Um, Western Districts with 141. Yeah, Brucey Gosling with 41 runs there, and uh, Tyler Chapman with 4 for 13 for the Wadi Boo boys. Um, not a bad score, but Wadiki Warren Boo uh, haven't been defeated all year, and uh, they chase it down. They got the runs with loss of 5 wickets, 5 for 143. Jake Sampson, who we mention nearly every week as well. Best of the batters for the Wadi Boo boys with 48, and Corey Waters with 40. So uh, that was their round 11 fixture, and uh, this is their final minor round coming up uh, this weekend, and that's going to be between Western Districts and Kyan Cutter, which is uh, going to be a funny game because uh, the week after that, they have their semi final, and uh, it's going to be between Western Districts and Kyan Cutter. Probably, and that one's going to be played at Woodner in a couple of weeks. So I'm not too sure where this week's game is being played. And heading to the Great Flinders A grade results, we had Kapini Mount Hope, who went down to Kokolichi. Obviously Kokolichi quite impressive in this display. Yeah, fantastic. It was a probably, I'd call it an upset nearly. Kapini Mount Hope have been the measuring stick in the Great Flinders League for some time now and they've been pretty good this year, although they've had some pretty disappointing games as well too. But Kokolichi, um, yeah, they've been pretty consistent all year and uh, too. This is Kapini Mount Hope for 68. Fair effort. And uh, led by Matt Forster, who we also mentioned quite a bit and is not getting any younger at this stage. Uh, he took four for seven. So ran through the Cupini Mount Hope boys and yeah, he came on to both third or fourth chain so yeah it says a lot for their depth at Cockleachie but uh, they didn't have it all their own way in the chase uh, Cockleachie lost six wickets in getting their 70 runs to defeat Cupini Mount Hope and that was the second semi so Cockleachie have gone straight into the grand final uh, the first semi final was between Cummins and uh, the Hillbillies of Yellander Flat uh, Cummins made nine for 126 so probably not quite enough in a final um, best of the bowlers for the Hillbillies was Carl in Somerville. He took five for 17. And our mate that we just like to mention him because he's got a good nickname, Ballbag Franklin, with two for 29. And uh, the Yellow the Flat Boys came out and they passed the score six wickets down. Julian White coming off 100 last week with another good score. He made 54 for the Yellow the Flat Boys. So, uh, yeah, they'll be coming up against Kapini Mount Hope uh, this week in the preliminary final. Paul Pierce, always great to chat Air Peninsula Cricket with your fine self. You take care and enjoy all the action this weekend. Thanks for joining us on the Flow Sports Fit. All right, no worries. Thanks, Ellis. And still to come on tonight's Sports Fix, we'll be speaking to the flow man about the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflicts and what that means for the sporting landscape of Europe right now. And also, we'll be hearing from Courtney and Ricky, who I believe will be digesting quite an interesting cricket scoreline that took place in recent days. Stay tuned.